Hi, I am Parni Jaggi and in this video we are going to be taking up the famous play The Duchess of Malfi written by the popular Elizabethan dramatist John Webster. Now we know John Webster as an essentially tragic writer, a writer of pessimism who projected the pessimism of his age where he was living in the renaissance spirit and he tried his hand at a comedy also the devil's law case but his genius found its full and perfect expression in tragedies like the duchess of malfi and the white devil which are actually the greatest tragedies in english language outside william shakespeare's tragedies so while we have a look at his play let's know a little bit about when the play was published he probably wrote it in either 1613 or 14 and was first staged by the end of 1614 and it was performed first by the prestigious King's Men acting troupe at the Blackfriars Theatre. Now when we take up any play, we need to know uh, the background of the play and uh, the introduction of the characters that play a major role in the play. Now this is basically a revenge play, a revenge tragedy. Now what is a revenge tragedy? It is a tragic play in which the tragedy results from some kind of revenge which is taken for some wrong or wrongs either by the person who, who wronged himself or by someone else on his behalf. Now this was actually a trend in his times and he was much much influenced by Senecan tragedies also. So the main characters, if we have a look at the characters, we know the Duchess of Malfi title itself derives from this main character who is the Duchess. Now this Duchess of Malfi is a sister to the next two characters of Ferdinand and the Cardinal and she's a twin sister to Ferdinand and tragically, unfortunately, she has been widowed in her youth, in her prime youth. Now she has although promised her brothers that she won't remarry and but she has a heart of a woman and she immediately almost immediately proposes to Antonio who is a nice friend of hers and this is one decision that ultimately leads to her destruction and the destruction of the entire family. But if we look at his uh, look at his her character, she is strong-willed, she is brave, she is proud, she is passionate, and she is a loving wife and mother. So while we have the opening of the play, Antonio speaks of her incredible virtues, and although she marries him against custom and against the wishes of her brothers, her inherent goodness and vitality stand in stark contrast to the evils of her brothers. The next important character is Ferdinand. Now he is the Duke of Calabria and Duchess's twin brother. Now he actually has an impressive collection of vices. He's not a good man. He has a terrible temper. He's greedy, he's lustful and he has a kind of an obsession with her sister. Now because of his power he is corrupt also. But as his anger over his sister's actions grows, he becomes more and more kind of abnormal, deranged <clears throat> and uh, throughout the play we see him often associated with the fire imagery and he represents violent evil throughout. Then we have another brother, the Cardinal. Now he is the older brother of the Duchess and Ferdinand, the Cardinal of Aragon. He again represents not so good features of a human personality. He represents cold and calculated evil in contrast to his uh, hot-tempered brother Ferdinand. Now he is a kind of a Machiavellian character using the power of his position to torture and counter his sister the Duchess. And ultimately uh, through the play we see that he loses his ability to control the events 
and finally the situation which Bazola exploits to kill him. Now a very important character of the play, uh, we may call him the antagonist and a chief character is Bazola. Bazola is actually a tool through which both the brothers, the cardinal and Ferdinand perpetrate most of their evil in the play. He is hired by Ferdinand to spy on the Duchess, for whom actually he serves as a manager of her horses. Now he is an enigmatic figure, willing to murder for hire without any hesitation. And as his deeds lead to worse and worse consequences, the banishment of the Duchess, when she is thrown out uh, and her family also, they leave that place, that country and go out of the country. The murder of the Duchess and her children. Then we have Antonio's accidental death. So we have Basola in almost every important event happening in the play. But he shows more and more remorse for his actions later on. And it is only when Ferdinand and Cardinal refuse to reward him for what he has done, then he stops blindly following their orders and then finally he is the one who avenges the Duchess and Antonio by murdering both the brothers, the Cardinal and Ferdinand. Then we have some more important characters playing significant roles. We have Antonio, who was actually the steward of the Duchess's household, kind of a worker, an employee. Duchess falls in love with Antonio and then secretly they get uh, wedded, married. And they manage to keep this news and this relation hidden from her brothers and Bosola and all others. Now, when we look at the character of Antonio, he's honest, he's a good horseman, he's a good judge of character, a loving husband, father. But he's also passive, he's mild, he's largely ineffectual in a major crisis which has happened throughout the play. And ultimately, he is unable to protect his family from all kinds of harms that they are getting. And uh, we also see, if compared to the Duchess, he is rather unremarkable and unimpressive when compared to the Duchess, who is uh, an impressive personality. Then we have Delio. Delio is Antonio's friend and only one besides Cariola who is initially entrusted with the secret of Duchess's marriage to Antonio. So Delio remains a faithful friend to the family throughout the play. He also has uh, a history, an affair with Julia, uh, which he would like to continue. Then we have Cariola. Cariola is a maid and a confidant to the Duchess. She keeps all her secrets and all her <coughs> affairs with her. She is also the witness to the marriage of Duchess to Antonio. She is the first to know about it. She keeps the secret uh, to herself. She is faithful and in the end, she is tragically killed by Basola for keeping this secret. So she is punished for this. Then we have Julia. Julia is a mistress to the Cardinal and Castruccio's wife. She is also befriended, wooed by Delio, later falls in love with Basola. And Basola actually uses Julia as a tool to give out the secret, the confession for the Duchess's death done by the Cardinal, after which the Cardinal poisons Julia. So Julia also meets her death in the end of the play. Then we have the children, the three children of the Duchess and Antonio. They don't really actively participate in the play, they don't speak, but they are on the stage shown with the parents in multiple scenes. The two young ones are heartlessly murdered by Basola's men, while the oldest is the only member of the family to survive, and this oldest son of the Duchess and Antonio symbolizes a hopeful future towards the end of the play. Then we have some minor characters like Count Malastesti. He is known for presenting himself as a soldier, but he is coward. 
and ferdinand actually re- recommends him to the duchess as a husband but she doesn't like the idea then we have the marquis of pescara he is again a soldier we have castruccio he is a courtier with ferdinand in his palace then we have silvio he is again a courtier in ferdinand's palace we have rodrigo we have grisolin they are also courtiers under ferdinand's palace under ferdinand then we have the old lady who is actually helping uh, with the child deliveries of the duchess we have the doctor who treats ferdinand we have pilgrims we have the mad astrologer we have the doctor mad doctor mad priest mad lord so these are some minor characters that appear just towards the end of this play so we'll look into the story of the play in detail in the coming video so stay tuned till the next video please like subscribe and comment on the videos if you like them thank you for now